What's up, everybody? This is Mavo Pauline. Welcome to KDDP, Kuz the Digital Discipleship Podcast. Yes, today you're watching us live because it's true. We are live. This is our first ever recording video-wise, and we are so excited that you're able to see our faces. Now, whether or not you think we are pretty or handsome, the creator decided, man, <laughs> at least finally you can put a face to the voice. Welcome to the only Kenyan discipleship app that exists. Who's the app? Now, I'm very excited to have this going on today, and especially now that I know you're all in lockdown, you're quarantined, quarantined, primary, primary, that's up to you. You are at home, probably. Probably mend a job, you're working on your laptop. We are here to want to tell you, man, relax, take it easy, life is short, Jesus is king, right? <laughs> got you there. Anyways, now, I've got some of my friends here today, and we have a conversation just about to kick off, but uh, before to find a mambo mengi kama hayo ni kependa mojo yetu tafadali atuweleze jinsi ambayo tungeza kupata mambo kama kuza kwa simu zetu za rununu. Yeah, man, that's like a mobile phone. I just interacted with Tanzanians right there. Ni mwamkua. Yo, Matt, ebu ambia wa Tanzania vile tuneza pata mambo za fuza kwa simu. Sasa kama unataka ku, ku, kufuata sisi. You're really going on in Saudi. Hey, ume, u, sasa umeingia na mimi na Swahili. <laughs> <laughs> sasa jina langu ni Matthew IK Mzungu Mwitu na furahi sana kuongea hapa na nyinyi. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to encourage you guys um, check us out. Follow us on um, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Um, you can see those links below. All of them are at Kuza app. Also, you can send us an email, kuzaapp at gmail.com. Yep. And also, the most important thing is follow us, check us out on our website, kuzaapp.com. We have blogs, we have podcasts, and we have videos there. And then also, download the app, as Marvin said, on um, the Google Play Store or on the Android Store. The Android, by the way, the Android app is really nice. We got an update Amarius for it. Caballero Sinora. <laughs> yeah, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> so check it out. Um, it's free and it works offline. So the Sisha to Taki Ku, you know, ku ku let the shida kwako to not take a ku let the app yao to me. Yes, so, we are mindful of the economy. Hey, India. So make sure you guys check it out, download the app. It doesn't burn up your bundles after you download it. Yeah, man. And you can also call us on 07 99 or WhatsApp on that. Um, my name is Victor Kelo. My best time on Anita Saddam. And I've been really, really looking at this crazy fiasco that is that has been happening in the country and all over the world. Kwanza to make one locust invasion in Guinea, Moja deadly all the way from the Arab countries, Ikakuja Somali, Sasa Imekwa Kenya, you know. Uh, Causing a lot of damages on our crops. Yeah, yeah. Alafu kuna tena US Embassy wa katuambia juzi juzi Buddha. There will be, there might be a terror attack on one of the hotels here in the world. At the same time, the coronavirus which we had as a story that was in China uh, and Europe and US mm. right now has landed in the country and seven confirmed cases in this country. Mazi, this is a very, very worrying time. You know, I'm going to add him to the white. Yeah, finally, we're going to hope you're 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 going to hope you are so think it through it. First of all, um, for those of you who probably have not interacted with me much, I also serve as a youth pastor. And one of the things that I was just thinking about as this situation is going on is, one, we are not going to have our youth service this Sunday. We are all going to be online. Uh, we canceled our fellowships, uh, our Tuesday Bible study, and we had just launched it last week. And it, it had picked up amazingly. Uh, you know, and, and so in my head, I was just, just trying to think, what could a young person be thinking about right now? You know, probably they, they are relatives abroad or overseas. Uh, the country already is on lockdown. We have schools closed, campuses are closed, primary schools closed. Um, you know, workers going to work, people have been told you stay at home if you if you can, if you don't have to go to work, if you can work online and all those things. And one of the things that I've just realized, even my kids themselves, I remember one day, one morning, my son comes to my house and like, mom, mom, can the dogs get coronavirus? Because they wanted to play with the dogs. And you could, you could tell the kind of fear is like, it sounds like a stupid question, but really it's legit for me. It's like, these things get corona as well. Mm. So there's a certain wave of fear that has been sent across. What am I go I mean, Rosa, how does it go to Niamaji? Dani Amaji, in fact, soaked and drenched. And so I just thought, you know what, let's let's give a biblical perspective of all these things so that at least we can give somebody, mm. uh, our viewer or our, our readers, something more tangible, mm. you know, uh, to settle their hearts on. 
sometimes many people think that when Christians talk about suffering, especially as reformed evangelicals, people think we don't play the pain people go through mm. and the circumstances that people oh, go we know the pain. Uh, pastor here, Matt, will tell you the struggles he has had, uh, you know, in his life, in his marriage. Ma- Marvin at the same time. Me, me, Pia, I've got, I've got my fair share of suffering. And so when you're talking about this thing, it is hitting everyone. Yeah. And we really feel, as Christians, we really feel it must be addressed and it must be addressed the way God wants it to, to be right. addressed. Right. So, Mavo, you tell us, huh? Is um, this the result? What's the genesis of it all? So now, um, if, if you read, if you read the, if you read the blog, uh, the first conversation that I start with is one: a biblical view of COVID nineteen. Um, how do I look at this situation right now? Um, if you are listening, if you are watching from Italy or the US, um, where cases are just rising and rising, and China or whatever, even in Kenya, they have started piling. We are at seven right now, and so we want to answer the question. How does the Bible fit in into this? And all the things that we need to understand from Scripture is that when, when God created the world, he created us perfect. Adam was perfect. He didn't have a drop of flu. Mm. Honestly, he never, he, never, he never had flu. He never had malaria. He never had the scare of Ebola, all those things. It was a perfect world, a perfect man, a perfect God. But then sin came into the picture. Genesis 3 tells us about the sin and how the serpent came and deceived uh, Eve and all those things. So technically, after that happened, then all humanity was, as Romans 8 says, was subjected to some form of punishment. Because of sin, everything else was punished. Now, the world stopped being as perfect as it was because now the ruler uh, of the world had, had the, the, now, which is the devil at that point in time, we, you know, talking from Ephesians chapter 2, he, he already had his way with man. And so one of the things that Adam ignored was the statement God told them, the day you eat of it, you shall surely do what? Die. Yeah. Now, death came in, in several ways, one, those spiritual death, but there's also physical death that would come to it. But now also, these are the form of death that comes is, is on account of the way the, the world was subjected in... Futility? In that futility. And so we die, we, our immune system is not as strong as it could be. And so just to try and help guys understand, listen up, whether you're born again or not, this corona thing, as, like, as any disease, has a genesis, and the genesis of it is sin. Because after sin, the world was fallen, humanity was fallen, and so everything else started happening contrary to what God had designed it to be. And without that um, kind of thing, without Genesis 3, then I'm so sure we'd not be talking about Corona today. Mm. And so the genesis of it all is not necessarily, you know, oh, severe hate is a bat, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a virus that can come through, it's an animal. You know what? It's a fallen world, we are living in sin, and these things are going to happen. I think that was the foundational thing. Now, the Bible says, we just talk about in Romans 8 about how creation is subjected in futility. And the Bible does say that that one happened in hope because even when God did that, he did that, but planning later as he promised Eve, you know, as the judgment came that the, 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 the son of, the, of her womb, that one would come and crush the head of the serpent. Eventually, there was hope much as there was going to be a period of time mm-hmm. where we are going to experience a lot of pain and sickness and disease. Mm-hmm. And so that is the genesis of it all. Mm-hmm. So Baba Wanasema, that um, even if we're a Christo, even if we say, I refuse it in Jesus' name, Amen. In talk, fact, uh, in fact, and, and, then, and then you add on some tongues there. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't matter how it you do it, how matter, you pray. Honestly, it doesn't yeah. matter how, 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 how loudly you scream. This thing is here with us. It is not about positive thinking. Just think about it. <laughs> just just get your energies. And then the world, it will respond. Karma is going to come. There's nothing like that. It is here to stay. But the thing is that we want to make sure that you guys are, are, are understanding is we want to lift up hope. Yes. And the sense of hope in that, you know, there's hope after death. After, mm. the, after we die, after all these things happen, we can go to heaven. Mm. And that is what I think Romans 8 is kind of mm. lifting up. And mm. Romans 8, mm. 25 through 30 that we're talking yeah. about is, yes, the world is messed up because of sin. Sin brings in sickness. And sickness is now we see in the form of COVID-19. Right. And now as a result of this, we need to make sure as we as Christians realize 
there is hope beyond the yeah, grave yeah, yeah. because yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for sin. Right. That is the greatest hope that we can have in this mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. and that needs to be our focus in these stressful in times. Fa- in, in fact, one of the things that I, I cited in that blog, the first the first section on a biblical view of it, is is to to just help us. And the statement I said there. Like, however, to look at sickness biblically means that we only look at it in the light of the healing that Jesus promises, both now and, and later. You know, and that one is critical. That is the right way to look at sickness. I might be healed, praise the Lord, even if I don't get healed of it today, even if I don't get COVID-19, or if I get it, what is the point of it? I need to be able to look beyond, because that is the uh, um, a balanced biblical view of sickness and disease is one, it exists because of the fall and the situation that we are in. But secondly, it is conquered uh, by what Christ did on the cross. Mm-hmm. And that one happens whether in this life or the next. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that is a very uh, right. healthy view yeah. of any sickness, including COVID-19. Yeah. Now that we know the genesis, and when you're saying it was subjected to futility, the one who subjects this world to futility is God himself as a result of the sin that men did, Adam and Eve. So him created a perfect world, and then him subjecting this world to futility. He is the hope that we have. Mm. You see, because that's a unangalel nani aliunda hii dunia? Ni mungu, sindio? So kama niyande aliunda, kama kuna shida ni nani ata isot? It is him. And so that's how in, in, in Romans chapter 15 verses 13 says it so clearly. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing mm. so that the power of the Holy Spirit may abound in hope. Mm. So he hope, in hope, Kwanza, ni personification of hope himself is God. Uh, ni yeye, na it is he, him that we are, we are holding on. It is him that we are, we are looking to. Because tunajua ilianza, ilianza wapi? Na tunajua ilikuwa aje. Mm. Right now, so it is him that you are holding on. And the word hope, maybe, sometimes we use it so wrongly nowadays. Tunasema, hey, hopefully, person na kuchekikesho. That's not, that's not, the idea there ni 50-50 na kuona. Sindi ya ama sita kuona. Yeah, yeah. But in the Bible, when you're talking about hope, you're talking about something that is sure. Right. Sure, why? Because ni God tunaongelelea. Mm-hmm. Paske is the God of hope. In, in, in the same book of Romans chapter 5, uh, anasema, therefore, since we, <laughs> now addressing Christians, yeah, yeah. since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand mm-hmm. and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Mm. More than that, we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance mm. and endurance produces character, character and character produces hope and hope does not put us where to, to shame. shame in other words god cannot put us mm. to shame because god's love has been poured into our hearts through the holy spirit who has been given to us now notice here the assure the assurance that um, paul and ajaribu kutuwekea kwa our hearts today is not the fact that uh, we are just hopeful to learn no, it is the fact that we are hopeful because we have been. There is peace. We have peace with the God whom to likosea. Right. To likosea right. God. So we have peace with him. Right. And how do we have peace with him? Because we have been justified through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So to, to make it peace. So that is the hope that we have. We have it in the sense that Sasa, blanda yote come. Manze tukona peace na mseme right. ya neza because right. problems zote hii dunia. At the same time, tukona peace na mseme ya neza sort hizi shida zote zinyi zina happen. Right. So that the anchor and the hope that we are holding on to ni, 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 ni God mwenyewe. Mm-hmm. So that's why knowing the genesis of all these calamities is important. Yeah, yeah. It is important because <clears throat> he is the one who subjected this world into fertility and then he is the one who is going to sort this world out from fertility. Yeah. So he will he he will again make it new, make everything mm. you know beautiful, mm. perfect. Mm. We will live forever in in, in hope mm. that we are in. That is the that is the thing that we are, we are trying to push out here, and yeah. so that you can understand now that to see same to but but to to achieve to achieve kula but and right now there's probably there's probably um, there's probably a question that is running through my mind, and that is something else that I was thinking about when I was. Um, when I was writing this down, 
why would God allow such kind of a disaster yes. to happen in the world? Yes. I mean, you know, and, and, and that is that is one of the things, if you read the blog again, this is the second portion of it, it's usually when, when God allows some of these things to happen, biblically speaking, it, it could either be one on account of sin, mm-hmm. all right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the reality is, you know, God has sin, God will punish sin. God must punish God must punish sin. Now, we are not necessarily saying, let me see you, by the way, and, and if you guys get info about it, I know there are videos on WhatsApp going on, oh, prophet saying this and that and this and that, prophet this, prophet that. Honestly, it's, the truth is, sometimes God allows pestilence and disease um, to come our way because of sin, all right? Now, that is a possibility. The world is in crazy, crazy darkness right now. You think about it, I mean, we have stories of daughters sleeping with their fathers and 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 and, and mothers hang, hanging out with their sons in ways that are unbecoming and we don't even have time to talk about lesbianism and homosexuality in mm. a blog online from what we have written before. They sin. There is the killings that are happening all around the world um against the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. They sin. And when sin comes, God must punish sin. And that is a, a possible thing, mm. you know. I mean, I know in Kenya to make one of the locus, you know, and I'm probably gonna think, why would God allow such thing to happen? One, maybe because of sin, mm. right? And, and as a country, I know we need to be able to look at it and even understand that there have been some sinful things going on in the country. We don't even have time to talk about corruption. Mm. We don't have time to talk about um, the way the, those ones who are marginalized are being mishandled and misused and all those mm. things. Sin, and when that happens, God responds. Now, maybe, maybe that is one of them. But also, secondly, because he just allows these things to happen. He's so great. Mm-hmm. You know, some people right now will probably be laughing at us and asking, you know, now, where is this God of yours? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. The Bible says that our God is in the heavens. And he does, and he does whatever he pleases. pleases and he does somehow, mm-hmm. for honestly, God-sized reasons, he has allowed this to happen. Mm-hmm. And when this one happens, I think one of the things that I was saying in the blog, and just to help us to understand, even as guys who are viewing, it's he allows that to happen, judgment comes, so that we can be given an opportunity to repent before judgment hits home hard. The worst, the, the, the worst has not yet happened. Mm. Right now, many have died. That is not the worst. That's bad. Mm. The worst is that all the world will be swept away mm. with this thing. So I was saying in that blog, and I think this is what we are actually saying, that at a time like this, whether you're a believer or non-believer, it is a call for us to repent. It is a call to repent. In yeah. fact, we can see um, an example of this is in Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. Yeah, yeah. There's two terrible things that happen in Jesus' time. It says in Luke 13, 1 through 5, there were some present at that very time who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. In other words, Pilate slaughtered these guys as they were just going to the temple to worship. Mm. It was a terrible thing. And he answered them, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will also likewise perish. Mm. Or those 18 who were in the Tower of Siloam who fell and killed them, do you not think they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Mm. So two terrible, tragic events happened. A tower fell and there were people brutally murdered. And the common thought was, right. And so they feel that this is the reason that these things happen. But Jesus says, uh-uh, these guys aren't any worse sinners than you. They have done just as bad as That's any of that. you guys have mm. had done. And yet they died. So Jesus is saying again, he says it twice, you must repent. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something worse could happen to you. you. Must repent. So in other words, Jesus is saying whenever events like this happen, whether it's a tsunami, whether mm. it is just Ebola, Ebola or some or, or, or SARS, I SARS mean, COVID, <laughs> the swine flu, right? Virus. It's, it's, <laughs> the Black yeah. Plague, like it was in oh, Europe, yeah, yeah. whatever it is, COVID-19. This is a sign for us to repent. Why? Repent in the sense that judgment is coming. Mm. Judgment is around the corner. Yeah, yeah. And so this should trigger in our minds, okay, I need to make sure I want to be right with the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you want to be right with the Lord. You want to make sure. And the thing is beautiful is that there is potential to be right with the Lord. As we talked about in Romans 5, there is hope mm. in Jesus it's Christ and what he's done on the cross. And I mean, if you don't know him, I want to encourage you to repent today and come after the Lord Jesus Christ. We are better off born again. I, I, and, and that's the thing. Whether, whether I die out of COVID-19 or... I, I experienced the economic 
pressure that is going to bring. And we're already feeling that to some extent. Mm -hmm. I'm better off going through these trains knowing that I'm in the load. Yeah. I, I think for me, that is that is one critical point right there. Mm -hmm. the, the, the call to repentance is I'm better off with the Lord in any circumstances, whether I have much or little, whether I'm sick or I'm yeah. not, mm -hmm. I'm better off in the Lord. And so I'd like think to that, maybe add something to yeah, that. Yeah, you know, yeah. talking about the, whether I have much or little, whether I have yeah, not yeah, or yeah. not, it's a call to repentance. You know, COVID-19 is, is, is a reminder of judgment in the sense of it's not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're poor. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter if you're humble. It doesn't matter if you're proud. It doesn't matter who you know or w how you dress, what yeah. kind of car you have, it's what true. hospital you go to. You can get this disease mm -hmm. and you may suffer with this disease. Oh, yeah, man. But at the end of the day, it's just like judgment. We're going to stand before the Lord. It doesn't matter who you know, where you've been yeah, yeah. or any of these things. You are going to have to answer before the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like, it doesn't matter. So you make sure there's one way, there's one hope, and that is through Jesus Christ to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that is our hope. That is the thing that we need to look to. Yeah. And I want to encourage you guys today, COVID-19 and all this that we're going through now is a wake-up call for judgment. Everything is wiped away. There's no EPL. There's no Man U. There's yeah, no Chelsea. True. There's no Arsenal right now. Yeah, it's I'm true. Keep it's true. Sasa. The NBA, bro. Yeah, no NBA. Yeah, NFL, bro. Hey. <laughs> See, so, no wrestling. No, no, yeah. no, no WWE. <laughs> so. You have seen no fights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sasa, it's just yeah, get you, yeah, yeah. to get you laser focused on what Lord. really matters. Right. Yep. What really matters. And that's that. make sure you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just add a few things. Uh, I, I know the last part of the blog, I, I, I talk about the the strong anchor for the soul amid this such kind of a week, mm. you know, on the, all these things. And and there's whether whether you have sanitizers, in the bathroom, in the living room, in the corridors, everywhere, or you know, you have gloves, or you're quarantined, the travel bans have, have come. Once they are done, once the sanitizers are done, once the travel ban is lifted, everything else is back to normal. What is our greatest point of truth? And that is our God. The Bible says that our God is awesome, our God is mighty, he is strong. To save, he's able to do that. Now, there are several things that are said there about God's sovereignty. I think the one that that, that will probably just summarize all of them is that to, to bring that reader and you is listening today to the point of knowing that we have a God who rules over all things. He's exalted on high. He's king forever. He's in charge. He's before all things, through all things, in all things, and must receive all things. He's the producer of all things, the genesis of everything, the end of it all. He is basically God, and we need to find our hearts, especially if you're born again. I think what, what my, my declaring call for this blog is to just get to the point of saying, you know what, Lord, whatever my lot, thou has taught me to say, it is, it is well, it is well with my soul. Why? Not because I don't have it, but yeah. because you are in charge. Yeah. You are in control of it. Just, just to echo the second point why we have, why God does this stuff and allows some of the evil things to happen is in John chapter 9. Yeah. A blind man from birth. Jesus passes by him, and then the disciples are asking, why is he blind? Is it because his parents had seen that he was born blind, or he himself sinned, that's why he was born blind? I mean, Jesus answers and says, it is not a matter of sin, my guys. He says it is an issue, it is God. God was the one who made him this way, so that he might show his works, mm among generations and Jesus heals him you know and he sees now blindness is not something that anyone wants and nobody even prays for God to give them a blind child mm -hmm. it is the same with COVID-19 nobody even wanted this thing to happen even though even if the China's we say they whatever the manufacturers I mean they never even thought it would be this bad but again, God has allowed it to happen to show his mighty works mm. through generations. Mm. Now, we, we, we've cited some of the plagues that has hit this world ever since time. There was a time that cholera was terrible in London. People died. Yeah, the Black Plague and all those stuff. But we see people getting out of them triumphantly and looking at back and saying, yeah, if it wasn't God, we wouldn't have succeeded through this. Yeah. Look even into your life, those moments where you really had tough times. Maybe you didn't have money. Maybe you were struggling through your fees. Like me, for example, three or two years out of school because I couldn't afford fee. And I prayed and God made it through for me. You know, I look at that life, at, at that story of my life and I say, if it were not God, 
I wouldn't have been here. Mm. And so every one of us have an example of that point of suffering in our lives. When you're looking back and you're saying, yeah, it was a really, really terrible time. But thanks be to God who leads us into triumphant processions that we are victorious today. Why? Because he made us get through them victoriously. Mm. So this is, this, is, this is also one of the points as a nation we should look at and say, thank God for coronavirus that after it or even through it, we will still rejoice and say, you are God and you are in heaven. And we are happy that you are helping us to know you better through this process. Fantastic. Mm. Now, um, so much on COVID-19, but then again, um, there's a ripple effect on this thing. All right, now we, we are seated here um, and then probably you're sitting and watching and we are on quarantine, quarantine. This guy thinks it's teen, I think it's time. So it's quarantine time. Now we are all in quarantine, something. And we are probably at home. You have your laptop there, you have your Zuku on, you have your Safaricom thing, you have your, was it is Airtel, whatever it is you're using, you're there. There's a lot of time in your hands. You're probably not married like us. Uh, there's no child that is running up and down with children. You don't have to think about some curriculum. And you're just there eating, going to the washroom, coming back and watching. And there's a lot of time in your hands and people are misusing time, really. Uh, we, we need to give some guys um, some, some advice in the next maybe like four minutes. How can we challenge people now to, to spend their time wisely now that we are under COVID-19 consequence and one of which is too much time in our hands? You know, I was talking this morning to Rafiki Angu um, and Amesema. When I and Matthew have been talking to some guys here recently and they get all this time because of COVID-19, you know, and they're just wondering what to do with all their spare time. They're stressed, they're worried. And he said a lot of them are struggling and looking at pornography. They're wasting all their time looking at these things. Mm. And he said, hey, I don't know what to do with these guys. And I want to encourage you, if you're home and you get a lot of spare time and who drew to find your name, mm. guys want to make sure, don't waste your time looking at pornography. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I would encourage you as you fight through this, uh, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Put mm. to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, right. sexual immorality, mm -hmm. impurity, passions, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Right. Now, it says put it to death. Put to death what? Sexual immorality. Don't have any mercy on it. Ua kabisa. Kill. Kill kabisa. One of the ways that you can do this is um, throw away your nice um, Samsung Galaxy S9 or whatever phone you have. And I want to encourage you now to buy a kabambe. Get a fake phone if you have to. <laughs> you know, make sure the one that cannot now get on, you know, can get online. That'll be hard for you, you know, to look at something on look at pornography online. You know, the number six and the number eight most viewed website in Kenya are pornographic websites. Wow. That's so crazy to, 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 it's to, to, a crazy statistic. So I want to encourage you guys, don't waste your time with that. Now, maybe you're doing this okay. I want to put it to death, Akuna Shida, but now VP. Or Kwanini. Kwanini is because the Bible says, put to death, therefore, sexual morality, which is idolatry. Sexual morality, what it does is it kills your relationship with God. Mm. It's idolatry. You know, as we get your eyes off of God and get your eyes onto something else, I want to encourage you guys, you know, make your choice. What is really more valuable in your life? What is the greatest thing you could ever have? It's Usiana na Mungu. Right. So therefore, don't get your don't get caught up in these things of sexual morality and lusting through pornography. Right. One way to fight this is in Colossians three one and two. It says, "Seek the things that are above." And verse two, it says, "Set your minds to the things that are above." Right. In other words, focus on what Christ has done for you. The hope that we've been talking about in Jesus Christ. Right. Look to His death, His resurrection, and His return. Right. Dwell on those, savor those things, mm. and that will help you now. Put to death sexual morality. Okay, Vic, maybe you, you can add us because uh, we really need to learn this plan right now. Mm -hmm. um, Matt is telling us, you know, buy a kabambe. Okay, now I'm busy. I I, I must be online. You know, I, I must be online because I'm on call. I cannot afford to buy a kabambe. I cannot afford not to be online. What are other ways that I can I can employ mm -hmm. uh, to maximize on this time that we have? Probably in a, in a, in a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, focusing on God. One, this is the time you'll have more time to pray, more time to read your Bible, mm. memorize scripture, mm. meditate upon them the whole day. Right. Get a book, even if you can memorize an entire book. I know one who has memorized Romans, Ephesians, and Galatians. Crazy man he is. Um, get a hobby. I mean, read a book. Mm. Learn how to play a guitar. Learn a new language through YouTube. Right. Get a hobby 
challenge yourself. Go to the gym, uh, do some runs. Mm, you gym. know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, such stuff. Up. You will. They 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 have a way of exhausting you, yeah. refreshing you, and putting you in a place where you you can realize you're much worth it than just watching porn, right. especially reading books. Um, don't read profane books. Get a nice, clean Christian book. Read. It will edify your Christian life. All right. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate the kind of things that we have shared here today. Let's continue writing. Let's continue talking. Let's continue watching. Uh, let's continue browsing kuzaapp.com. Let's continue downloading the app. Let's continue reading through all those devotions that are there, reading the blogs, listening to the summer videos. Let's continue hitting on that number. Call us. Find us however you can. We are here to make God glorified. And this has been your man, Mavo Pauline. This is Matt Elmo Mzungumutu and the one and only Sir Jam, aka Vic. And we are out. Yeah.